start record and just do a little introduction. Welcome to levelupyourgame.net. We're here for the clan base. Eurocup 22 Quake Live Team Deathmatch Metsu vs Alpha. This is the lower bracket final. The winner of this will go on to face four kings in the grand final, and that's later tonight. The teams we've got lined up for this Grim Dungeon's first map, Bab, Juvenile, Zero QL and Strife and Metsu. For Team Alpha we've got Keki, Demon, Maddox and Sparty. I'm Disrepute, joined by nobody today. Again, I'm not bitter that I've been left alone, but I do hate every single person that normally casts with me. Now Grim Dungeons can be seen as a very tactical map. You can get a stalemate situation holding off either team with a power up each. The battle suit on one side of the map, that reduces any damage from shots from your opponent and from, well, your your own rocket jumps as we can see. Quad damage spawns right where the battle suit player is now. And that will do three times damage, even though it's called quad. Don't get me started on that. So generally you see Battlesuit's primary job on this map is to kill the quad. The quad usually gets the frags and the Battlesuit holds the positions. That's been the traditional tactics of the two uh, power-ups. Of course you can get a lot of frags with Battlesuit as well. As I said, we can get either team standing off either side of the map, but you can also get games that are very fast and aggressive, assessing into the Red Armour area. And it's generally seen that that is the advantaged area on this map. The Red Armour, the Rocket Launcher, you drop down on Battle Suit, easy to defend that position and push on the quad. The quad guys, they have the same armour, they've got two yellow armours, but they also have to split the team to get those armours. The one the yellow armour is in the upper area and the other yellow armour is in the lower area. Both attackable. Which is why it's more risky to play that side. But then some would say that quads the more powerful power up so it's a beautifully balanced map for some interesting tactical play. So we're just waiting on the teams to ready up two players from Team Alpha, Sparty and Maddox just waiting on the two Swedes. Right, so last time these two teams met, Team Alpha did take it. 2 0, knocking Metsu down to the lower bracket. This is revenge opportunity for Metsu. And I think I'm going to go with Metsu overall. But it really could go either way. Two seconds. Excellent. While we're waiting, I'll remind everybody who uses IRC to join hash TDM pickup on QuakeNet to play TDM yourself. Really fun, enjoyable game type. There's uh, players of all abilities playing in that pickup. Get to play with some star players here as well. I was just yesterday playing a match with Juvenile. Oh, I felt honoured. And you learn a lot of fast playing pickups. It's not quite the same as actual match play, tactically, etc. But you do learn how to how to fight, how to hold areas, how to work uh, items through pickups. So it's a good place to start off after you've got bored of the public. On top of that, there is a thread on ES Reality. Uh, a news post about the possibility of there being a Team Deathmatch LAN tournament at DreamHack Summer 2011. 
a lot of teams interested in going to that. It's up to the admins to decide if they're going to run it, but any support we can show as a community will make it happen. I mean, it is essentially, there could be a TDM tournament as well as a dual tournament, or just nothing as well as a dual tournament, so it's win-win really. So, come on, ready up guys. We haven't got all night. Excellent. Oh, is that a spot NVC on ARC? Maybe he'll join us, who knows? <laughs> I can't believe it. NVC's reformatted his computer again. This is always his excuse when he doesn't turn up to things. He uh, got a tiny bit of lag or one crash, so he just reformats his whole computer. Here we go. Readying up. So, Euro Cup 22 lower bracket final. Metsu vs Alpha. And we're live. Following Keki to start off, he gets that first lower yellow and the rocket launcher. Oh, misses those important rockets on Zero QR and he's taken a hell of a, a lot of damage on the machine gun. Zero QR actually hadn't taken any damage. Wanted to try and steal that 50 away from Keki, but he couldn't in the end. Oh, and look at these spawns from Zero QL right next to Keki, who actually runs out of rockets, going to go down. Now, this yellow is going to be up in a second, as is the rocket. 25 seconds, every piece of armor, 30 seconds. The weapon spawn at. Now, from 30 seconds to 59 seconds, we can have the power up, so quad. Or battle suit, well, both spawn at the, at the same time at first. Oh, Zero QL knocking himself into the lava. Just got a surprise, perhaps, by Sparty. And there we go, Bab does get the battle suit. Looks like the quad's going to be delayed. And here's Keki going to move through now. That's a bit rash, We're trying to run through the doorway against the battle suit. Battle suit is probably in the advantageous position there. He's kind of stuck now with only 15 health. He's actually wasted all his ammo as well. Doesn't have a look down at the health, but goes down to Stry. After he did get the frag. So now we're following Sparty. He has got a railgun and a lightning gun trying to pressure on that red armor area that Metsu seems to be holding. There's one frag in it. Yeah, nice rail from Sparty. We're going to look at his stats straight away. 75% rail in four shots then. And it looks like... Team Alpha might be... No, they're not going to settle, are they? Yeah. Going to settle for this quad side of the map. There's nothing wrong with that. We're missing all the combat, unfortunately. Oh, Spy's going to get caught out here against Bab's rocket. Bab does get the rocket. He should put away his weapons and disappear. Uh, he gets pummeled in the back from Maddox. That's rather unlucky with this spawn. <laughs> kind of seemed to be a, a little bit out of control of his mouse there. Metsu just ahead at the moment as we were approaching this second minute for the second set of power-ups. We can see the teams are trying to hold off a bit, but look how aggressive Juvenile was pushing through the doorway, taking out two of the Team Alpha players. And now Zero Quell pushing in, but Juvenile manages to kill it. And look at this absolute riot going on in this tiny little room. This is a choke point of the map between the two held areas. Juvenile missing out on the red armor there. Is stolen by the alpha player. And hello, NVC. Cool boy, NVC has entered the channel. I like, I like it, statement. Um, yeah, I'm just downloading Quake Live, so sorry to our viewers for not being. Up. Here we go, Juvenile with the battle suit. Jump straight across. He actually got no armor at the moment. What's he doing? He's waiting for the rocket launch. He only had three ammo. Yeah, it's probably well thought out, actually. Maddox this time. He takes the LG as well off his teammate, so it's all shares around here. Now, uh, he would have just been spotted actually by the battlesuit there, so trying to bait the battlesuit to run in is probably a mistake. 
and he spots that and moves around to this uh, railgun position. If he can get in quick before the battlesuit backtracks. It looks like he has done and battlesuit should have run out now. Gets a couple of frags and that's probably going to be enough to control this room. And so the red armor and the rocket launcher now. Here we go straight away pressure from this rail position. But that's cleared up by the alpha players and Messi rushing in through the shotgun though. I thought they might decide to sit back for a bit. Conserve that small advantage they've got but no they're just going to set in and try and win back this red room straight away. Juvenile going down there to the rockets and straight away spawn fragged by Demon who almost controls the spawn with his movement there of Juvenile. Goes up the bounce pad though and he's a rather tricky situation here. Goes down to Babs LG. Again, straight away the Swede rushing through into the shotgun room trying to get into the red before Alpha get a chance to set up and defend it and immediately taking out two of the players as we approach the next power up soon. Now we don't have timers on for this stream because clan base rules don't allow us to so uh, I'm not very good on times. I don't know the time of the power up but roughly coming up soon. Spy, he's got position in the shotgun room to defend it from Babs attack. Does excellent with the slow health. Oh, only one health. He survives that. Gets the 25 and he moves through into this quad area. And the quad is the second power up to spawn. There we go. Battlesuit spawns. Juvenile gets it again. Going to pick up that crate of ammo. That might come in useful. And Zero QL takes the quad. So double power up pickups for Metsu. And now they should run right all over the map taking out the alpha players. Demon goes down first to zero QL. Now, I would suggest at least one of the power-ups goes to this uh, yellow LG area and starts holding that spotty going down as he jumps up the bounce pad from that lower area. Zero QL might have wanted to get that ammo there. He's only got 19 health, 19 ammo left. Although, look, there you go. Nice little rocket launcher for you as Quad runs down. And it looks like he's decided to stand around and control this lower yellow area. Now, he's only 53 health, so has to be cautious decides to back off eventually and just a slow passage in play there but the Metsu players ambush Alpha's lower defences on that yellow armour and we're moving again into another power-up minute. And the power-ups haven't really been decisive yet but that last power-up pickup from Metsu might be a sign of things to come. Very important control of the power-ups on this map. <laughs> Zero QL just trying to palm off his rocket launcher there. Didn't manage to give it away and eventually he does go down to the rail of Maddox. Let's have a look at his accuracy is he's hitting 50% rail. He goes down though to Bab. Let's have a look at some of his stats. 23% LG, 15% MG. Not a good aim day on the old hit scan for him, but 53 rockets is pretty good. Misses the air rocket that time though. Maddox trying to pummel. Oh, nothing's going to come of that. Here we go. Keki for Alpha. He takes the battle suit this time and Bab gets the quad. So here we go. All four Metsu players in there together. Oh my god, Keki knocked up in the air with the quad rocket and taken out immediately. Although, look at Spy! What a kill that was! Bouncing the Metsu players all over the place, and this shotgun room has seen so much combat so far. Eight frags in it. Juvenile just uh, stalking the back of this red armor room. But he's surrounded at this point, he's gonna have to play careful. Pushes on really close to get that point blank range shotgun that does maximum damage. Currently, I believe 120 damage, which is uh, pretty insane. And we know that. Uh, oh! Just gets fragged! He's trying to leave that red for his teammate. Probably should have taken it in the end. As Demon gets it, and. Well, he takes out Juvenile. Second time in a row there with a the shotgun. And here we go. Team Alpha have control of this red room. I wouldn't rush in if I was Metsu at the moment. Although, uh, the setup really from uh, Team Alpha wasn't that impressive, and Metsu might get control of this room. Again, into another power up minute. Oh. 
There's Metsu just getting caught up trying to share weaponry with each other. Got caught out and now the gap is only two frags. Team Alpha not in a great setup position to defend the room. There we go, that's a rather ridiculous attack from Strike. I'm at that bounce pad, it's uh, always a weak point to come in, but as his teams were pu teammates were pushing in, it was just slightly mistimed. Red's going to be taken by Maddox, who had a good time on that. And Alpha, go, one frag ahead just before Battle Suit. Maddox has taken Red, they've got a frag up, he's got his third impressive in a row there. Juvenile saving the day with the machine gun. Only briefly though, but yes, Bab does get the battle suit. <laughs> Tries to jump across, and here we go. Zero QL doing the intelligent thing, just sitting here stacked with this quad. Keki getting a pummel in. Won't be enough to kill the quad carrier though. And this has been ideal for Zero QL, although he has run out of ammo. He needs a teammate to give him a, a gunner though. There you go, shotgun just spawned there. This is going to work out really well if he can just hit his shots. <laughs> a double kill with that shotgun just shows uh, what a powerful weapon it can be. And if he's lucky with the spawn of the yellow here, this could be starting of a, a run of frags. But no, they decide to back off. So the red room obviously got calls that uh, Team Alpha are going to attack it the whole time as we're approaching the halfway part uh, point of this map. Both teams trying to desperately cess this area and get control. So close this scoreline. Metsu just ahead again and they have been ahead for most of the map. They've had the better power up so far. We're only halfway in though when it's a one frank game. You see Maddox sitting at this rocket launcher end. I'm not sure they have the best setup on this map. You don't really want to commit three people to one doorway, particularly. There we go, there's a tied point as Maddox goes for that red armor. Just going to start setting up for the battle suit and quad now. This is where it suits Metsu to be in control of quad. What they can do, stack up a few people, send three players to attack battle suit while they leave one just at quad. And Team Alpha should have to commit most of their team to defend this power, but in fact they don't in the end. They just need two to take out pretty much the whole of the Metsu team. Oh, and Quad goes down. Straight away. And the, the times are more synced up now, that's for sure. MVC will join us at the end of this first map. I'm sure you're all dying for his input. I hope he's actually watching the game so he knows what the hell's going on. <laughs> Three frag game, Alpha ahead now. Again, just setting in. We see Juvenile moving. Let's have a look at some of his statistics. 37% machine gun. That is extremely high, although his rail is not as high as he's used to. Perhaps a really nice rocket play. does go down to spot his rail from across the map. He's in 44% with that. And the teams are tied again. Sparta usually playing for Fnatic, of course, but when they're too lazy to sign up for cups, their uh, players kind of become mercenaries. Metsu again going that one frag up. It just seems that they have that little advantage every time in these fights overall to just go the odd frag ahead. Alpha's leads haven't lasted very long. As we're approaching yet another set of power-ups, I believe Quad might have switched around and be first match. It's actually really quite annoying not having the timers on. As Battlesuit, we saw how delayed it was from Maddox. He was just defending it with the railgun. Despite he's only got one rocket, 24 health, he doesn't want to... Well, he can't really do anything at this point. Team Alpha looks like they're just deciding what they're going to do about the power-ups. I'm not quite sure because they are very soon. And if they're not careful, they're going to miss out. Sparty goes down instantly. Maddox does defend this battle suit well, though. And he's dropped right on the spot to wait for it. I hope he's not too early, though, with 100-100. Oh! Nice rocket to defend himself. 
that could have been really dangerous if the Metsu player had managed to actually drop on top of him. Here we go, zero QL with the quad now. That is nicely delayed. So Bouncy should run out before zero QL even has to come into the room, although he rushes straight in. Of course, I'm not sure what happened to the battle suit, whether it's alive. There it is. Maddox moving through into the shotgun room. Nice rocket from Zero QL. Finishing them off. But the rail from Maddox kills the quad as well. And that could have been a, a really important kill, actually. If Metsu had managed to keep that quad alive and cleared out the Alpha players. Although it does look like they do have control of this red, but not for long as Team Alpha moving in with Demons LG. Runs out of ammo there, hitting 30%. As we follow Stry on his 9 health, he's going to have to health up a bit here. He's going to go down instantly, going up the bounce pad like that. Sparty moving in, just patrolling this uh, middle trench area with a shotgun. Drops low, maybe looking for the spawns. Bad punishes him with that rail, though. <laughs> Aggressive push with the rail when he has a rocket out. An interesting choice to uh, change the rocket when he's in a position more ideal for rail. Uh, they, these players are hitting all of those rail shots across up to that rail platform and Demon would like to look at that green uh, laser. Here we go, we're coming up to the power-up minute again. It's a lot later now though, the delay on the power-up. So, as Metsu hit a triple figure soon after Alpha. Such a close game, seven points in it. Zero QL pushing ridiculously with that lightning gun against a rocket. He never really should have won. But Demon's rockets were oh, pretty pathetic in the end. Oh, look at that though. Demon, very clever play, running straight out of the rocket flow. Who ends up pounding himself in. As Stry takes the battle suit out for Metsu. And comes back. Zero QL got the quad, but he went straight down. In fact, was that a team kill on... Not sure, but either way, Metsu have the power up on the map, and look at this, two frags in it. We've reached three quarters of the map played, and there's still only two frags in it. Remind everybody, this is Clan Base Eurocup 22, lower bracket final, lovely rocket from Zero QL, straight into the chest of Sparty, takes him out, and look, teams are tied, 108 apiece. Now Metsu want to get a solid lock on this red and start stacking up. Zero kill already has a rail, so he doesn't need to stand around and wait for the spawn. Looks like Team Alpha is sitting back. Doesn't seem like they're attacking yet. On this primary location. And again, we see Metsu in the lead. Again. Just that slight couple of frags advantage. They've had a lot of the map. Oh, nice. Nice frag on Spy. He was probably a little bit aggressive there with the rail, though. Although with the score this close, and still with four minutes to play, it's probably not that much of a risk to give away a couple of frags trying to hit shots like that. So Zero QL does need to do this. Get in a defensive position with this rocket. Block off any of those uh, cheeky rails coming through from the shotgun room. Stack up on these shards. He's going to have to pressure the quad. Now the quad still... Uh, actually it spawns second doesn't it as it got killed straight away so Battlesuit should be up first and uh, Metsuit look like they're in a position to take it Zero QL yeah it looks like Team Alpha have perhaps done what I suggested Metsu were going to do and push three on yeah Sparty takes the Battlesuit it goes straight down though and then it's all rushed to quad see who can get there first it is Zero QL who moved in brilliantly with his rockets he goes down though to Spy, it's MG in the back, that's unfortunate. Sparty, good rocket play, but juvenile. The Danes rail, here we go. 43% only though, 60% rocket. He also has high percentage of rockets. Unusual for TDM perhaps. Be even more unusual in CA though. Metsu's still got that small frag advantage. Looks like it. Juvenile just chilling out, waiting to get the call for attack. Actually, if he pushed in there, he might have killed the player and stopped him getting the shotgun and being able to move in. But he backs off and takes that yellow armor first. And look, Keki's going to go down. Quick, sharp-ish. Takes out Sparty as well. We've come to the right player at the right time here. 
Juvenile going to take out Sparty off the spawn as well with that lightning gun. And now probably wait for the yellow before he does anything else. In which case, it might be worth just sitting back on the yellows and waiting for the power-ups. Here we go, he's getting lucky on the spawn again. Takes out Maddox with some nicely controlled lightning gun. 36% at the moment. And it's the last power-ups coming up. And Metsu have just built up this lead of about 15 frags. It should be, actually, compared to most of the leads in the map, it's pretty comfortable. But it's all going to be down to this last power-up. Juvenile taking critical damage before the key power-up time. And look, Heki, 55 armor, 99 health. They've actually all dropped down, so that no one's defending this upper drop. Which could be a little bit dangerous if they got dropped on top of, and they do! Juvenile! It looks like he did just save the day there as well for Metsu. He does get the battle suit, gonna go straight up the bounce pad, perhaps rush to quad. He's failed that jump completely though. Demon only 85 health, this isn't ideal, and if he's gonna rush the battle suit, he's gonna be in trouble here. Doesn't wait for that upper yellow, doesn't wait for the lower yellow, he's gonna rush around. He need they do need to get frags, of course. But he's in a very vulnerable position, only 85 health. Can survive one rare, oh my god, good dodging and pushes well, but eventually does get hit and goes down to strike. Shotgun, 20 seconds left. And it is looking like Metsu are going to take this. They're going to hide low as he strike. Doesn't even need to, 5 seconds left. Get some more frags. And there we go, 40 to 25. Wow, good game. Very close, very exciting all the way through. Excellent play from both teams. There we go, juvenile star player again, 47 frags. And uh, time no, to I invite you, you, NVC, is it? Yeah, it is indeed. I've come prepared with more Monster Energy Drink to get me through any potential TDM delays. That's the part. It actually sounds like it's it. been doing quite well today in starting yeah. time, right? Well, well I guess yeah, it's because there's late. no Fnatic. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it was supposed to start at 7, and it's now, well, 20 to 8. But that's um, UK time, so uh, it's kind of 20 minutes late, isn't it? I think you'll have to do the invite thing at least 5 or 6 times again. Oh dear, okay. Usually on one of those it will work. Well, there's a password, by the way. I've given it in Mumble. You have four invitations. No games available. Okay, whatever. What are you doing? Ah, it's working, it's working. Just, uh, you know, I, I did the, the weekly MVC reformat. And, uh, yeah, at the worst possible time as well. For anybody that doesn't know who NVC is, he is a uh, a former Quake Live player. Mm. Is that right? TDM only, I like to say. TDM only. He did play yeah. for his country once. I can't remember the outcome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apparently I did really well. Oh, I did so okay. well that Quake Live is now asking me to complete my training game before playing online. That's oh, the sort of calibre of player I was. Yeah, let me restart my game. NVC, the founder of Level Up, our great, yeah. oh, our great leader. Actually, to to break that momentum speech you were going into, they're asking for a little more quality, uh, quality volume for in-game sounds, but only a tiny bit more. Uh, it should be 0 0.3 anyway. That's strange, seeing as I did the exact stream conflict. It's probably because I just talk all over the game. When you're on your own, I have uh, the same problem issue has, is that you just start talking. <laughs> I do this on my own, watching things at home. Watching EastEnders, I just talk all over it to myself. Ooh, Doc Cotton, yeah. <laughs> do they get EastEnders in other countries? I don't. Uh, yeah, that's a cultural reference then, I guess. Sorry about that. Uh, let's just say... Uh, a show that everybody's heard of, I don't know, Lost or something. Yeah, I do over that. Yes. 
Clo, are you sorted yet, NBC? Because they're gonna ready up in a second. Uh, just about. You're on the server, it works, yep. Yeah, I didn't back up my stream call big any. Uh, of course, I made the stream call big, I don't even have it myself, so I'm just giving my. I didn't my commands from my game call big, hold on. Um, what? Who's on red team, please? Red team is Metsu, blue team's Alpha. Okay, then I'm ready now. Right, so those of you that have just joined us, welcome to Level Up Your Game. Dot net and disrepute joined by NBC Metsu vs Alpha. This is the lower bracket final of Euro Cup 22 Quake Live TDM. The first map just saw Metsu take out Alpha. That was Alpha's pick, Grim Dungeons, and we're now on campground. So Metsu's pick, Bab Juvenile, Zero QL, Stride, Demon, Maddox, Ptolemy, and Sparty. Ptolemy swapping in. Keki. Here we go, Zero QL with the shotgun. Just got the yellow armor as well, so he started off absolutely perfectly on this map. Armor and a weapon. And it's probably the best weapon you can get in TDM at the moment, the shotgun. What are you expecting to see then, MVC? Uh, wow, well, it's typical DM6 I'm expecting. Both teams are going to fight over that red armor. And if they can't get red, probably stick around at the rail and make an organized push in, but... You know, I said that for the last game we covered, Fnatic were playing, and Fnatic didn't really care to enjoy the win, so I'm, I'm just going to see what there happens. There we go, here. first quad, Ptolemy managed to grab it, but went straight down, and that is uh, the way Quake really works on this map. The parrots don't last long like they did on Grim Dungeons. Yeah, it's just like a massive set pit of damage if you try to drop down and pick it up. That's why I like to say people should be coming in to in from the lower entrance last second just have one guy ready and we really didn't see that in the last game of code and I was really annoyed because you can sometimes go out of there. Then, but when you're all dropping in from mid and top levels, not really too likely. But right now Metsu holding that red armor distribute, uh Tony's trying to get in and actually they've done quite an organized attack man. Yeah, yeah, looks well, good from Team Alpha there, moving in, taking control of the red armor. That is usually the uh, primary holding location that a team would want to do. Want yeah, to I mean, it's the easiest place to hold, isn't it? It sort of makes sense that you do go there and you've got the, obviously the powerful red armor. Uh, you've just got to be careful you don't commit all of your team there and let the rest of the team have all the other items on the map. So I think you're going to see a lot of people pushing out following Maddox just pushing onto that bridge with the LG. Did a bit of damage, but he had to back off quickly against the rockets. Takes out Bab with the railgun. He's getting caught from behind though by Stry, the shotgun ever dominant in this mode of play. Yeah, okay, as we said off. that actually, I'm not sure what was happening. Metsu then got back control of Red Armor, so it seems to be really up in arms to be come back to this next quad damage. And Metsu, uh, Juvenile is actually doing the perfect thing by trying to secure that lower level. Uh, in the sort of 20 seconds running up to quad, but he did actually just waste the Red Armor. So let's see who picks up this next one before the quad. Again, close game. This is Metsu's map pick, of course, but Alpha are not exactly amateurs on it. Yeah, but Ptolemy actually got that last red. Now he's gone up to the bridge, and rather than trying to secure quad, he's just pushed all the way over to the bridge trying to pick up a kill, and what the hell was he doing? He wasn't there to support his team. And even so, quad went down again straight away, distribute. Yeah, Spy just sitting on that mid-level, not committing himself to quad. Just letting the Metsu players drop on it, stand at the bottom as he stood at the top railing. Took it out instantly as Juvenile picked it up. Juvenile, though, returns the favour and frags him instantly as he t picks up that yellow arm with the, the power of the shotgun as he's in 35% with that, that's a, a very high accuracy in fact just went up briefly to 37 but hasn't shot it that much of course yet still very close game, 5 frags in it here we go. Yeah, this is typical, typical of DM6. I had a pretty close start in around about sort of the 12th minute. You'll probably see a team by then around 30 frag advantage, usually because they've been securing that red armor a lot better than in the first couple of minutes. Right now it's zero QL over there with Ptolemy trying to attack in, but Metsu have support. Yeah, so Team Alpha we're following control. Maddox at the moment, controlling the railgun instead. Sparty and Maddox, two Swedes top quality jewelers as well so they should do a pretty solid job of controlling this key area 10 frags is the difference now in Alpha's favour what would you say about controlling the rail point then NVC? Um, 
it's a weird one. Some people, some teams like to keep people there for the entire match. Uh, other people like to get that railgun and then take it to red armor if they've got it in control. So I'm gonna guess it. It sort of it more depends on where your teammates are to how you play rail. Would you agree? Yeah. I mean, if you've got the red, you'll try and take the, the rail over. If not, then you'll uh, probably pick it up and sit around mid middle level as we come up to this next quad in five seconds. Two Metsu players on the bridge at the moment. Demon's dropping down a quad with Juvenile again, though. Metsu still not fully committing that time either, and neither were Team Alpha, just two of them attacking down. Shry did take out the quad, though, eventually. Ptolemy picked it up. We actually were just following Maddox just before that as... He hid around that mid doorway to the upper shotgun, just ambushing Zero QL, who looked pretty stacked, but he took two full on shotguns to die. All that for nothing on Maddox, although Maddox eventually went down. We're following Sparty now. He's got a shotgun, he's got a grenade launcher, but he's getting pressured heavily. In fact, he's done well to <laughs> survive that long, although he dives straight back in to the clutches of Zero QL. And he's moving across this midfield to try and get the spawn kill on Sparty, though he wasn't watching where he was going. Get taken out by Maddox, although Stry returns the play with the rocket launcher. And now Sparty gets the frag. Let's see, his teammate, you can see above, controlling that red armor. Well, that was a kind of ridiculous open jump pad from Sparty to get shot, but he did actually get the kill with a direct rocket. Two frags in it as he takes out his own teammate, Maddox. I gotta say, DCP, I'm not at all impressed with the red armor play by either team. This red armor just gets picked up by the alpha player and then they just run off and just leave it free. And look, now Juvenile's coming, he's gonna pick up the next one. I'm gonna guess that's actually mostly to with Ptolemy. It seems to be him that is the main culprit for that. Maps yeah. not waiting for a team to come over and take over his position, I don't know. Here we go, Juvenile, you would have said he's the kind of, the exact kind of player that you would want controlling the red armor. He's got good aim, very good Especially aim as rail. Well he does have a rail at the moment, yeah, exactly. Nice rocket. Misses the air rail, though. <laughs> Takes out Ptolemy. Actually, he's taken a hit from the rail gun across the other side of the map. Picks up the ammo and the health, and he's he's back up to stack again. Although, he was just on his own attacking quad there. That's, uh, wow, what happened to Metsu there? I, I think it's just generally sloppy play from both sides. I, I, I <laughs> I don't want to praise either team right now. They're both making quite big mistakes, but it's the red armor or the quad. Sparty getting that yellow with the quad, moving up to the bridge. Oh, a rail for his troubles as well. He's going to push on really quickly. Two red, although that last nade just hitting him and down to one health. Eventually went down to the machine gun from Zero QL, who was standing at the red armor. And now Metsu do have the advantage on this position, although it's not exactly well held, and Zero Kiel's going to lose out here. Behind. Yeah, look, bad. Oh, maybe not. Oh, just sitting on Railgun and not really moving out with it. That's, well, I don't really like to see people doing, but if you're going to hit the shots, it's kind of nice. Meanwhile, Metsu have also lost out on Red Armor, so I, I can't help but think that Railgun could be better used. And actually, he's dropped Rail for Maddox to pick up, so. I think. Uh, a lot of the Swedes we see playing nowadays seem to all be Teams rail position tired. players and like to stand at rail a lot. You think of Sparty Teams and Maddox on Team Alpha and then Babel Teams Metsu. Are tied. Teams are tied. Just must be their dominant aim with that weapon. Following Demon, just controlling this red armor area. The 50 health will bring him up to about 80. And it's Alpha yeah, go one frag the ahead. Quad as well, so we'll see what he can do. Let's switch on to Demon if you can distribute this. I'm on him, yeah. the next 20 seconds. I've seen a lot of reds wasted, as I say, from Team Alpha. I want to see this one used a little bit better. Maybe drop down to lower level and actually have a proper push onto onto Quad where he can't take a rocket or a railgun or a shotgun in there. Took a rail Same. straight away from the bridge. As NVC called it, in fact. And actually, why didn't he just delay that red a little bit? Because aren't they just going to be pretty synced up now? Yeah, whoever goes down the quad first... Will oh! Be Demon does take out the quad. In fact, I think he took out two Metsu players growing for that quad at the same time. He is lucky to get back in time. Could have been spawned the red, just like we see his teammate. Sparty spawning there now, and it could have been stolen from him. I don't know why he's trying to give away all his guns. But anyway, he's back up with the rocket launcher and the shotgun. We're going to probably move away from Demon here because he's stacked, but he's not actually doing anything. 
I'm going to switch what we around. At least say it's nice to see that they're now controlling red armor a little bit better and they're not losing it, yeah. so to speak. Well, it's it's interesting to see Mets who aren't even attacking it, though. Because you follow Zero yeah. QL, who's just run down to the quad area for some reason with the lightning gun. We, actually, we see this trait in his play that he seems to be the guy who just uh, runs around the middle levels, just dominating with his lightning gun. Oh wow, I don't know if you're watching Maddox then, double grenade <laughs> onto Maddox and uh, onto uh, two of the Messi players, didn't actually frag any of them or went down himself, but could have been movie work this morning. Well, we saw a, a good push from Zero QL getting a couple of frags on the bridge, but then he eventually went down. We're now following Stry, he's picked up a drop rocket, almost hit a direct on a player on the bridge, knocks Barty up expertly over those 225s, he could have lost them all, both completely. Well, he's going to get set down surely by the MG. If not, he's going to hit, run into a nade in a second. Bouncing all over. Oh, the shop. As Mets, who are just ahead by two frags over the halfway point. Um, if both of these Team Alpha players keep their hold of their red armor, they're going to have two players with 100. Um, I'm interested to see how they're going to do on this quad. I think they're going to be a lot stronger than before. May see a clean quad pick up as Demon waits just five seconds before quad to pick up the last red armor. Let's we'll see what they can do. Yeah, we see Sparty just going down in that midfield. There you go, Demon. He does have 130 armor. He's hardly got any health, though. He's riskily capable of dying. Riskily? Is that even a word? I think you just made it up. Nice point line range shotgun on Stry. He was trying to go for the pummel. Still, still 14 health. Does have this quad, though, and so much armor. But with so little health. He's, he's actually going to lose out on red if he doesn't get back there. Actually, he's doing a nice job of at least securing Ptolemy back entry into that red armor. And yeah, look, that, that quad is just testament to how powerful red armor can be if you deviate it or you know share it equally among your teammates. You'll get a, a cleaner power up. Yeah, then he did go down though. It showed that he desperately needed that health still. He was rather rashly jumping across there, right in full view of the rail gun. In fact, most of the quadron he was just searching for health. Teams are tired, but told me he goes down trying to control that rail, and there's a lot of fighting over this mid area rail. At the moment, it's not normally a position you see tons of fighting over. And again, I'm going to highlight the point that we haven't really seen massive fights over the red, it's just seemed to exchange hands whenever people feel like losing it. Demon going up the bounce pad, did a lot of shotgun damage to Juvenile, should have been... Juvenile should have got away with more really, I mean... When you have a bounce pad position, a guy shouldn't be able to come up and just destroy you with shotgun, but that's what Demon did. He'd go down, but Juvenile went down to his teammate. Now Stry, just taken that red and he's in control of the area, he's got the weaponry, he's with Zero QL supporting him. I see dispute. Unless it's Demon, none of Team Alpha seem to really care about waiting and securing Red for Demon perhaps to come back. They lose it every time unless it's him. Quad's gonna spawn. Picked up by Sparty this time. Down to 10 HP after that rail gun. He will find 25, but unfortunately, doesn't get to pick it up in time. And that uh, Stry will pick up the flag. <laughs> A nice little pummel attack from Sparty there on Zero QL. Didn't pay off in the end though. Back on the Team Alpha point of view, Patome. He goes down to the shaft of Zero QL, only 4 health. He does pick up the yellow though. This is a really dangerous position to be standing if one guy runs around the corner, a few MG bullets. Ooh, look, just got spotted there. He's waiting for that 50 though. Oh, there you go, down to 3 health. Might be. Yeah, look, like Metsu tried to make a little push in there to red armor. They did that by three team alpha players. I think probably for the first time in the map, three team alpha players in red. <laughs> Actually, so unlucky, but it looks like they still want to come in. It's strange, even though I just testing the water up there. You see the interesting positions that Zero Kill does take up. Areas where there's not so many items as such, but a lot of pathways that players take as they cross the map and pl where players spawn as well. Picks up a lot of frags from playing that 
technique. He's got the last three yellows, so he is stacked his zero QL, moving into this plasma gun room and backing off through the shards again. He's been desperately trying to stack up his health slowly as he goes around. And Metsu have brought it back to a level game, and now they're ahead by a frag. Closing in on the next power up. I have to say, guys, watching the stream, if we are in Juven uh, Zero QL's path, it's not always ideal to run around with that LG open in full part as Oh my god. Sports. That was an excellent pop. Two minutes of Zero QL playing brilliantly, stacking up slowly, getting frags in less than usual positions, I'll say. Not necessarily unusual, but less than usual. Moving around towards this lower up. Oh my god, a bit of a slow reaction on Ptolemy there. He's gonna take a rocket to the face and a rail. Maddox takes him out eventually, ending that run of no death that brought Metsu back in the lead of the game. Although now, Alpha again on top. Yeah, Zeruki, I definitely need some of my monster energy drink right now. That was a uh, very poor problem, really, wasn't it? To, considering the stack he had on him. And, uh, it's a bit of a shame because we are still tied up here, 125 to 125, just entering the last four minutes almost of this match. And who needs to win this one, Distribute, to take it to a third map? Team Alpha needs to. Right, let's see what they can do. This is the lower bracket final, the winner will go on and play four kings straight after this. Uh, we'll either have a little break, well there'll be a break whatever, but it might be an hour break or something, and then the four kings first the winner of this. All this match might just last so long that we play it straight away. Zero QL going stupidly up the bounce pad against Demon. That made absolutely no sense. He saw him there. He saw he had a weapon. He must have even heard him take armor. He still went up and just died. Nice rail. Third impressive by Demon. Takes out Shry as well. And suddenly, Demon on a rampage. 50% rail for him. One more red before this quad. I want to see Ptolemy. I was about to say delay it, because he's going to pick it up straight away. And uh, please, Ptolemy, don't waste it. We've got 20 seconds until quad. Yeah, standing open, firing grenades. Going for a fight you don't need to take and lose all that armor. And probably die. Congratulations. Now he's going to be useless. But uh, I hate to be the one to, to sort of point that out, but it could have been a lot better for Team Alpha. We're just on Juvenile, he's gone to red, he's going to pick it up, he's going to miss quad though. Actually, it... Quad is... already went. Oh, it's already went. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant, That's what I was trying at the Tolem, he just went for a fight he did not need to take. Didn't do any damage, in fact he probably did zero damage, and then went down to 40 HP just as quad was spawning, of course he didn't get in there. And yeah, team two of Team Alpha is with 100 armor just, just wasted. What on earth is Juvenile doing? He's like being so rash and aggressive. I can't believe he hasn't taken a load of damage yet. He got red and just ran out around the map in open spaces with long range shotguns being his uh, weapon of attack. Although that's worked out brilliantly. The push on Sparty at rail position with his teammates as well. In fact, Metsu, brilliant attack here on the Alpha setup. They've brought it back to a one frag game but they have lost the red armor again I mean I don't really understand why aren't they sticking I, someone there sorry if this map dispute for both teams I think without red just not using it as effectively we've seen one real red armor share and attack quad successfully and you know that was Sparty I believe and he only had a low amount of health for the entire quad room but we just saw how powerful it was and really not being utilized Maddox 7 odd impressives, we catch him hitting his 57% rail, such a good railer, approaching he's the be last the only power one with armor as well. Yeah, and he's just taken a rail, so he's only got 40 of that left now, and a rocket, straight, it's like he wasn't watching at all, look at all of Mets who's standing together in the midfield, just taking that long range Seth. They suddenly all run away from each other. One at frag Quite in there. Three seconds. Babs come in lower level. It's actually going to take this for free. Oh, Bab, what are you doing? Maddox dived on it. He went down to the Metsu players. Teams are tied. What um, was Bab doing? Quad was up and he had plasma. He decided instead to pick it up to let the guy drop down. Hope he hit 100% mid air plasma. Just give it away. 10 impressive for I mean, Maddox. 
Oh wow. Last minute of play. Don't get too stressed yet, NVC. The game's oh, not it's over. Straight, <laughs> All right, come really down. Does. Just such ridiculous mistake. It's tied up though with 40 seconds remaining. Maddox and Sparty over by that bridge. Most of Metsu seem to be lowish levels, so maybe they can do something nice here. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. This, uh, this favours uh, Alpha at the moment. 30 seconds left. Oh, brilliant. Shaw from Sparty is going to go down to this set. In fact, Metsu is going to take this. So what do you think? I don't know, you know, Maddox is just deciding to MG everybody and not, you know, if I was Team Alpha, I would have perhaps called, you know, run to red armor. No one was there. Team Alpha had it. Why didn't they just camp it out with MG? But it looks like they're actually doing quite a nice job with that machine gun anyway. Oh my god, one frag. <laughs> wow, Alpha take it by a frag. That was Metsu's pick. So Metsu take Alpha's pick. On Grim Dungeons and Campgrounds is won by Team Alpha by a single frag. We're going to go into a third map. Oh my god. Uh, I, I can't... It is too I close to call. Like a, I sound like a massive... Douche. ...tard. But, <laughs> like, Bab just gave quad away to his teammate in, in hope that he was going to 100% air pass him. But Ptolemy just goes to take stupid fights against two players five seconds before quad... I don't know, Distribute, but just um, the red armor was not really shed out and sort of saved, almost wasted every time. And, you know, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm just depressed that, you know, these teams at this level it's still depressed. make this, these sort of mistakes. I, I think, um, I think that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is they had another thing in mind than what you thought NBC and maybe your your idea of what would have been the best thing okay. maybe it wasn't right right right, right. but what I'm trying to say is I, I just don't understand why Niba team doesn't have any sort of greed like within them you know if I was bad who cares if there's a better stack player on something next to this quad I'm just going to pick it up myself and see what I can do and you know it's, it's DM6 how how long can you leave quad standing there not, not long at all you know I just, I like to see a bit of greed. Either way, we I saw a really good round there. One frag is the difference. I think sometimes just uh, the level of skill involved in VC makes certain things really hard to pull off. Basic uh, tactics, say, holding the red or something. Then I must be like... Let's not be too critical player, of these players. Yeah, you're the, you're the best. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I just, let's, I'm just hoping we see a bit more coordination from both teams on this third map. I, uh, what are we thinking about? Either of these two teams, how are they going to do against Four Kings? Um, four Kings, we've seen like them lose Kings recently. Gonna, yeah, but if DM6 comes about, I think Four Kings uh, would, <laughs> would win put it that way and obviously they're quite strong on other maps as well I, I would favour four kings regardless who plays if it's today it will be today after this match four kings the the current title holders of the clan base cup of course it was open cup last season is now up to the level of euro cup so they're going the book with uh, all the past winners such as IC and uh, iron excellent hmm Whew, calm down now. Yeah, calm down. Calm down. Well, so what? Like, do they do they know the map is coming, or do they want to pick it, or what? And I don't think we even going to know this map at all. No. Of course, if you are tuned in, check out our ALC channel. Hash LVL. Ship six, <laughs> really old side, really. Yeah, really useful. As I say every time, channel. I do mean, yeah. There was a TF2 team, and back then it looked really cool when we had the the, the tags, you know, and it, it was like 4K esque, but you know, so much cooler. And then now, as we were a streaming organisation, it's just annoying. So I actually just go to the level of your game down there and put live chat. It makes everybody's life easier. Excellent. We've had a lot of TDM at them, well, recently.
Clan Base Euro Cup, ESL, ES, EMS, and uh, the ESH Cup going on every Thursday. There's also a possibility of a LAN tournament at DreamHack. There is a news post on ESReality.com about that. Yeah, I'd say it's more confirmation from the admins that they have the capacity at DreamHack to hold the Quake Live TDM tournament. Not that there ever hasn't been that opportunity, but now and our head admin actu has actually confirmed it. Now's the time to show your interest. Get playing TDM pick up on QuakeNet, get onto ESL, show your interest, speak to Draven if you're a team, or uh, Noctis, or I don't know who Tibble. else is involved, maybe Tibble, and in Reason Gaming. Be willing to attend. And you know, if this gets sorted, you may see a lot more organisations getting involved, willing to send teams over, so oh dear. maybe get your facts straight on some orbs that could potentially send you if you're a good team, and then, uh, get started now. So, it's going to be... Realm of Steel Rats, the old CPM4. This is a no rail map. Yep, it's not my favourite map to watch. I tell you what, if they added double jumps, it would be a pretty cool map to watch, though. Lots of trick jumps out. Oh, did there. you see actually Zero QR from Matsu today? Have you seen his new jump movie? Yeah, I, th I think if we get a chance, I'm uh, going to show it tonight on oh, stream yeah. while we wait for the Four Kings match. It is worth the watch. I mean, you can't do some of those jumps yet because I think they're not actually enabled by default. But through some C bar settings in private servers, I guess, maybe. Yeah, it's just a setting you just turn ramp jumps on yeah. when you boot a server. So everybody go out and buy a pro account. Uh, if you haven't played CPM, you know exactly the kind of jumps we mean. Smart's played pretty much all the time over there in that game type on Quake 3. And that's sort of what makes this map fun, being able to do some of these jumps that you can't do right now. It also yeah. sort of opens up the game a little bit. And I just find it a little bit stale when, you know, okay. right now where you can't get to certain levels quickly. So, looking at the teams, Bab, Juvenile, Zero QL, and Stry for Metsu. They won the first map by a bigger margin, which basically means they go down to pick this third map. And... Team Alpha, we've got Demon, Maddox, Sparty, and Keki is back for Ptolemy. So, what is your prediction, NVC, on this map? Who will come out victorious? Well, before I start playing, I hated this map just because, you know, teams just rush LG in their Dharma. They get a time in LG and they dominate. I don't know if the play has changed, if teams have adapted since then, but uh, given last map, I didn't see the first one. Actually, how did DM14 go? I think DM14 would yeah. be more of indicated for this one. It's very close. Metsu were just ahead pretty much the whole time. In this case, I, I have no idea. I think it's going to be the same, same effect. Very close game. Here we go. Following Maddox straight in there. Loses out on the LG to 0QL. Oh, brilliant dodging though. 0QL down to 33 health from the machine gun, does pick up the 225, but he goes straight down to the shotgun of Demon. In turn, look at that early set, he takes damage, in fact Demon's running around with an LG and a shotgun here. He's going to lose them both, as Iroquel rushes in with that MG. Now, we could get a quad from 30 seconds to 59 seconds, there is only one power up on this map. It is Maddox on the opposite side. has that side. red armor before it as well. Yeah, so the teams probably want to start getting there now. And oh look, following Zero QL, he's missed it. He's well Maddox out of the way. Maddox missed the jump over. Oh wow, Maddox was there with 100 100 to so you <laughs> Completely failed the, the annoying jump, as I like to call it. And uh, dropped right down to the bottom left spot with quad with no one. Let's see what he can do as he tries to get into it. Oh him. my god, Zero QL. Perfect LG as he went up the bounce pad. Spot, I mean, the problem with this map, I guess, is trying to get up to those upper levels. You have to take a, a bounce pad up, perhaps, if you exactly. go around the long that's route. What, that's what you don't get, unless you have those ramp jumps that we're hoping we see added, perhaps. So Spy going down with that quad, but it does put Alpha, that one frag up, although it is now a tied game. Still too early to call about which team looks like they're on top, both been assessing this red armour LG area. And here we go, look, we see all four Metsu players in the viewpoint there. Juvenile still waiting on the lightning gun. He's got 50 armor to protect himself, but only a gauntlet. <laughs> As Maddox pummels him. 
And he's got nothing either. Grenades will do nicely for a few seconds as he waits for the LG. Three frags ahead. Alpha. Well, yeah, it seems to be setting up nicely over this red armor actually at the moment, Team Alpha. Doing a pretty decent job.